You haven't talked to your kids about drugs. Hey! Make an appointment. Yo, Ma. You want to see me? And if you don't know what to say, ask us. For a free parent's guide to drug prevention, call 1-800-624-0100. ESPN Home Video presents The Sutton System to Better Golf for Junior Golfers. The younger you start golf, the more you'll play it and the more you'll enjoy it. I think it's a rad game, but I just can't play it. <laughs> like if I hit a really good ball and I'm really excited, it might that might brighten my day. <laughs> it's really relaxing. I, I go out and play golf like after a frustrating day. I'll go down to the closest golf course and just hit balls or go play because I want to get let loose all the tensions. I mean, go out there and just kill a golf ball because it's, it's just something to do. It's competitive, but the only person you really compete against is yourself, so I like doing that better than compete against other people. I think it's good to start young because it's easier to learn, and if you get older, it's hard to change bad habits. Golf's a really great game to bring the family together and have a good time. Just go hit a golf ball. Just kill it. I mean, you want to get loose some tension and frustration. Go out and play golf. You can hit it just as hard as you want to. And it's a fun sport. <laughs> golf is a serious game. Hey, congratulations! Not just for choosing to watch this videotape, but for choosing to enhance your golf skills and your knowledge of the game. If you're a young player eager to learn and refine technique, this tape will help you. The techniques you will learn from this program, though, are universal. They are the same basics all players can benefit from knowing and practicing. So, in the spirit of the game of golf, maintain a playful attitude while you work at improving your skills. Play with your family whenever you can, and have fun while you discover the golfer within you. Because if it isn't fun, it isn't golf. I'm Dick Lawrence. We are both staff professionals at the Ben Sutton Golf School in Sun City Center, Florida. And I'm Heather. And I'm Jack Nicholas. Jack Nicholas, this is really Shannon. He's one of the stars, they're both stars in our kids video that we're going to be making today. And we're going to start you at the green and gradually move you back to the tee. We're starting with a putt because it's the smallest and the simplest of all the swings. It's actually the easiest one to learn, but it's one of the most important. Did you realize that putting a putt this long counts one stroke just as much as a 250-yard drive? So it should be your goal to become the best putter you can, because when you do, you'll lower your score a lot. Now the two things we're going to work on on putting are two simple things of learning how to roll the ball in the right direction and learning how to roll the ball in the right distance. Those are the only two things we have to work on. That sounds simple enough to me, so let's get started. Now to have a good beginning in your putting, you must establish a good aim so that you roll the ball in the right direction. Get directly behind your ball and look at the ground between the cup and the ball. It looks pretty level, so let's aim the name of our ball, just like an arrow, straight at the cup. Okay, you've got a real good aim. Now let's talk about your grip, because the grip also influences your uh, direction of your putter. Stand back up now and let's get our hands on the club. Put your thumbs straight down the center of the shaft so that both palms are facing squarely at each other. Now wrap all ten fingers around the club, but do it gently, very softly. Now pick your club up a little bit. Hold it soft enough so you can feel the club head. If you hold it too tight, you won't be able to feel the club head and you won't have a smooth stroke. Okay, let's walk over and aim the ball. Aim the name straight down the target line. 
Now you won't have to think about aiming anymore. Now lay your club down on the ground so that you can get a good grip, palms facing each other, thumbs straight down the middle. Now walk to the ball and get parallel with your body to the ball. Establish a nice Y and stroke the ball. Perfect. Remember, keep a straight lead arm and club shaft relationship. That's your lowercase y. Okay, we've got a good grip. Now let's find the sweet spot of our putter. That's where you want to always hit the ball off the putter. Let's get a ball and start tapping on the face of the putter. And where you find that it's really solid feeling, that's a sweet spot. There's not a lot of twisting of the putter. Do you find your sweet spot? Yeah, and you've got a mark on yours, so that'll always remind you of where your sweet spot is. How about you, Shannon? Your putter doesn't have a mark on it. I'm going to mark it. Well, we've talked about your direction. Now let's work on your touch. Your brain is the greatest of all computers. Look the distance over that you have to go and feel it with your eyes. And that will come from your brain and to your arms to tell them how far back and how far through to swing. Try practicing putting for distance without a putter. Just roll the ball at your target. You'll be surprised how your arms and hands will instinctively know how far to roll the ball. Just focus your attention on the distance you want the ball to roll, relax your grip on the ball just as it should be when holding on to your putter, and hey, let your natural instincts do the rest. Now notice that with a putter you can do the same thing. Establish that good Y grip, hold the putter lightly, Focus your attention on the desired distance and bullseye! You can think of a clock pendulum as you putt. Just say to yourself, tick tock. Tick is the back swing, talk is the forward swing. The longer the putt, the slower your tick tock. For Shannon's putt, it's tick tock. Another short putt is a mere tick-tock. Well, now that we've felt the stroke with our arms back and through, let's get the putter in our hand and feel that the putter is actually a pendulum back and through. Tick-tock. And we have to have a goal in mind for every putt. Now these circles that we have on our green here have small circles for the close putts and larger circles as the putts get longer. My goal is hopefully to go in the hole, but if I don't go in, I'm happy if I get it within the circle. I'm going to start with a 10-foot putt. I'm going to practice swing just to get the feel for that tick-tock for that 10-foot circle. really want to feel that distance with my eyes. Now a 20-foot circle. I want to go in the cup, but if I'm in the circle, I'm happy. Okay. Now a 30-foot. Really got to feel the distance with my eyes on this one. Get in, ball. All of those putts were good. You've got to remember that not all putts can be made. So set a goal and get it within your circle and you'll be a much better touch putter. Well, not all putts are straight and we've got a challenge here with the slope of this green. Let me show you what would happen if I aimed straight at the cup. Gravity really pulls that ball down. So I'm going to have to aim higher up the slope this time. Look at this rope we've drawn. 
This rope represents the putting line that I want the ball to roll on. And that's what I visualize when I'm putting, a nice curving line. I'm going to aim it up the slope, almost hit that a little too hard. I need to swing a little easier. There we go. Now the best way for you to get touch on these sloping greens is to make sure you practice a lot. Pay attention to the slope. Aim up the slope enough and through experience you'll get the hang of it. Be cool on the course. As a golfer you have certain responsibilities or rules of etiquette to make the game more enjoyable for all. Here's one. If your ball lands on the green leaving a mark, you can fix it by lifting the center of the indentation up with a T. And then tapping the area down smooth with your putter. Good as new! Did you know that you can lift your ball off the green to clean it, aim it, or remove it from another player's putting line? Just place a coin or ball mark directly behind your ball. Now when you pick it up you'll know exactly where to replace it. And now we're ready to move off the green. Have you ever been to the zoo, Shannon, Heather, and seen the gorillas at the cage, how they stand around all day and they let their arms just swing back and forth, make little noises? Go ahead and bow over. Let your arms swing free and easy and back and through like a gorilla. Let them hang loose. Do you feel your arms swing free of your body? That's where you want to be, that kind of freedom, to swing your golf club back and through. Now relax a minute. Did you ever go to the beach or the, to the pool and see a swimmer on the blocks ready to jump in that pool? How they get a nice little flex in their knees, ready to move position. Let me see your knee flex position. That looks great. Now let's go into our gorilla arms. Let's swing our arms back and forth. Good. Great. Now you're ready to play some golf. You look free and natural and easy. Let's grab these beach balls. Let's find out how far do we have to stand away from the golf ball. Just hold the middle of the ball or you at home grab a pillow and let's swing this ball back and forth. Nice free arm swing back and forth, making sure we don't run our, our beach ball into our bodies. Back and forth. Now we're ready to set up Mr. Y and swing our golf club. Now I want to introduce you to Mr. Y. First we want to take our grip, then we want to set up our Y position. Both arms and the shaft form a straight line, the right arm forms Mr. Y. Okay, now let's get into our grip. Let's take your nice grip that Joyce Ann taught you. That's great. And set up Mr. Y. Now remember, it's not a capital Y. It's your lowercase y. That looks great. It's very, very important that you have a good routine in lining up your club face and your body each and every time that you set up to the golf ball. And to demonstrate this, we have Shannon. Get yourself in the groove for all your golf swings. First, sight your target and pick out a spot a few feet in front of the ball that you can easily aim for. Get a good grip, set your arms in your Y position, and walk into the ball. Aim that club head straight at your target. Now, set those feet a little step forward and a little step back. The longer the club, the larger your step back will be. The first shot that we have from off the green is a chip shot, and a chip shot is simply putting with an iron. Once we've established our good Y position, each shot will require a different length. On a short chip shot with a little bit of air time and a lot of ground time, it may just be a little 7 to 5 swing with a 7 or 8 iron. But as I need more distance, it may become an 8 to 4 or even a 9 to 3 swing. This Y stays intact as we go back and as we go through, picture your swing like you're standing in a clock and maybe it'll give you an idea of what swing to use to attain the right distance for you. Here we are off the green and just because we're off the green doesn't mean you can't use your putter. You know, here at the golf school we try to recommend three clubs around the green to make it real simple. And the first shot I'm going to show you this morning is the putt from off the green. Shannon, if you'd hold these please. When you're putting off the green, 
You still set up your Y, move your hands a little forward. The only difference, when you putt from off the green, make sure you tap down on the back of the ball a little bit. You want it to jump a little bit before it starts its roll. Watch this a little bit. Not too bad in a magic circle. Now, a good way to get the feel for this shot is just like putting. Why don't we roll a couple balls down here by hand and get the eye-hand coordination that we need to accomplish this distance. That's excellent, excellent. Go ahead and roll another one down there. That ball will roll right through that fringe as long as it's not too long. If, it, if you don't have to elevate the golf ball, don't. Very good. Let me demonstrate one more putt. The only difference, when I, once I set up my Y and decide how hard I need to go back and through to get the distance, the only other thing I'm going to do is tap down lightly on the back of the ball and permit the ball to jump. I'll take that putt anytime. Well, here we're confronted with a little different shot. We've got a lot of green between the flag and our ball. This grass is a little long. I don't know if I can putt through this grass. I think I better go over this grass. I'm going to like to chip. There are 14 golf clubs in your bag. That's too many to think about using around the green. I suggest two. We've already talked about the putter. That's the safest one. The next club, when you have a lot of green and very little fringe to carry, let's try the seven iron. That'll give you a lot of roll after your ball carries in the air a short distance. Now, how will I visualize this golf shot? If I wanted to roll that golf ball to that flag, I'd pick out a landing area. In this case, I'm gonna pick out a spot maybe 15 feet on the green. Okay, what would I do to go back and throw the golf ball to that area and make it roll to the flag? I visualize the shot, I toss the ball, and it rolls. Well, that wasn't quite the right shot. So I'm simply going to pick out a little different spot this time, a little further up on the green, a little more power, follow through. That's about the right amount of force. Let's go ahead and toss the ball up there. That's great, that's great. You guys have a great sense of touch. Okay, now you've rehearsed the force of this shot. Let me show you how I'm gonna rehearse the practice swing with my seven iron. Would you hold those, please? First of all, I'm gonna set up Mr. Y, but this is a short shot. That means I'm gonna take a short, choked up grip. I like control, so I wanna have a shorter Y. I'm also gonna rehearse this shot back and forth until I can brush old Mother Earth. I wanna hit this grass both ways, swinging my Y back and through, getting a feel of the stroke. This shot, I reflect back to my little clock position. This looks like about a little eight to four with my seven iron. Let's see if this will work out. Set up Mr. Y, short grip, look at my landing area. Perfect. Well, I'm happy with that one. In this case, my little eight to four swing with my seven iron was a perfect club. Feel the shot through your eyes, project to a landing area, just like you were gonna to toss the golf ball, and you'll be a better chipper with your seven iron. A 7-iron is a great choice for chip shots where you need a lot of roll on the green. Here it flies one-third the way and rolls the remaining two-thirds distance. Well, here's an interesting golf shot. I can't roll the ball through that trap, and if I hit that 7-iron and onto that green over this bunker, it's going to roll too far. In this situation, I've got to use my wedge. I need a little more loft, like Two-thirds of the time will be spent in the air, one-third of the time will be spent rolling. Let me toss a golf ball and show you what I mean. If I land the golf ball up in this area, it rolls a short distance. Again, I'm going to pick out a little longer one. That wasn't quite as close as I'd like. Throw it a little higher, land a little softer. That was perfect. Let's see you guys try this. Pick your landing area, toss it a little higher. Great. Good touch. A little higher, softer shot, the shot would be reproduced with your wedge. Beautiful, right in the hole. Okay, great. Now let's refer back to our clock for a minute. This shot to me looks like it'd be more of a nine to three type of swing because I've got a lot of loft, so the ball's going to go up a little higher instead of rolling. 
it's going to be two-thirds of the time in the air and only one-third roll. All right. So let's rehearse this with a few practice swings back and forth, brushing Mother Earth both ways, getting to feel the swing, a little nine to three type of swing. That feels pretty good. Now I'm ready. Pick out my landing area. Well, as you can see, there are a lot of options around the green. And the safest shot by far is to putt. If I don't have to elevate a ball over anything, just tap down the back of the ball with that putter and get the ball rolling. The second shot, if there's a lot of green to run the ball, up for the eight iron or seven iron, that will give you the one third of the time will be spent in the air, two thirds of the time will be spent rolling. That's a very safe shot too. But if you have to go over a little mound or a sand trap, you're gonna have to opt for one of your wedges. Two thirds of the time in the air, one thir third of the time rolling. And this may be your nine to three swing. Picture the clock when you make your shot. Picture the shot from around the green and you'll get these shots up and down with one putt a lot more often. Always be considerate of players behind you. Shannon wisely places his bag near the pathway to the next tee. So when he's finished playing the hole, he will not slow down play. Notice too that he removes the flag and lays it down gently on the green, making sure it is out of the other player's way. Well, we've gotten a feel for the putt and the chip. Now we're going to be a little bit farther away from the green where we'll have to swing a little bit larger. So I came back to the clock to show you the size swing we need. Now the pitch shot will need either an eight to four size swing, a nine to three size swing, and sometimes if you have a very large pitch, even a 10 to two size swing. If you'll notice, as I swing in these larger swings, my body also begins to move too. And that keeps me in balance and good rhythm as I swing in this pitch shot. Now we're going to get the beach balls again to show you something about how your body does move with your arms naturally with a larger size swing. Now that we've got the beach balls, let's feel what your body does as your arms swing back bigger. Let's go from nine to three. Back and through. Good, back and through. Just do it nice and smooth, but just a nice continuous swinging motion. Back and through, back and through. Just keep moving to get the feel of how your body is working nicely with your arms. I'm seeing some good leg action too. You know, in the bigger golf swings, from the pitching all the way up to the full swings, our legs should really feel that they're working nicely. Let's get the left knee back, right knee forward, left knee back, right knee forward. Well, I hope you've gotten a look at how the swing looks and feels when you're actually using the pitch shot, how your body does relate to your arms so that you can feel very balanced and smooth. Now we need to talk about the clubs that you use. The clubs that loft the ball over any traps or bunkers and slopes that might be surrounding the green. There's four clubs that are very special clubs for pitching. The eight and the nine and the wedge and the sand wedge. The eight and the nine are good clubs so that the ball will roll nicely on the green. And the wedge and the sand wedge are clubs that will really loft it high into the air and let it land softly. We're gonna take the eight iron now and show you how to use it for a shot near the green where we're gonna have to hit the ball and roll it a great deal on the green. Well, here's the situation for that eight iron pitch shot. But before we get started, you must have a very slight grip change so that you've had a lot more control of the club for these larger swings. Now remember in the putting how we put our thumbs straight down the middle of the shaft? Now I'm going to change my putting from my putting grip 
I'm gonna open up my hands and show you that now the club rests at the bottom of my fingers, at the base of my fingers, right in this position, in both hands. So when I close my hands up, my thumbs now don't point at all straight down the shaft. The left thumb points to the right of the club, the right thumb points to the left of the club. Now this particular grip position will give me much better control and good feel as I swing with a larger swing. Looks like we'll need to increase the size of our swing for this shot. It's a pitch shot, and for this particular swing, Joyce Ann knows that an approximate 8 to 4 swing with her 8 iron will get her right up there. Oh, I see. Her lead arm points to the 8 o'clock position on the back swing and ends at the 4 o'clock position on the forward swing. Everybody has different strengths and abilities. So practice your swing sizes while thinking about the clock positions. And find the swing size and golf club that works best for you for different situations. We've got an entirely different situation here. We've got a lot of grass to go over and a slope that's pretty high. And the pin is very close to the edge of the green. So I need a shot now that flies high and lands very softly. I'm going to imagine that the ball is flying about two-thirds of the way and rolling only about one-third of the way. What kind of a size swing do I need for that? Well, I think from here, I'll probably need a swing that's around nine to three just somewhere right around nine to three. Notice if you see anything different happening in my swing. Looks like I'm breaking the tail of my Y because in the other shots, the chip shots, I was more this way. And this is a very important position to be in for pitching. It'll get the ball farther up into the air and farther out to land it softly on the green. I'm gonna show you now, before I actually hit the shot, a great little drill that'll give you the feeling for a nice little breaking of the Y as you swing back and through. Okay, this drill is great because you don't have to have anything but your own body. Take your left thumb and hold on to it with your right hand, just like you're holding a golf club. Now what we're trying to do here is get the feeling of breaking our Y. So as you go back to nine o'clock, let your thumbs start pointing upward. Back, upward, now come forward, to three, upward. Great. Do it again now. Back and through. Thumbs up. Back. Thumbs up. Through. Thumbs up. Back and through. And hold your finish. Use your pitching wedge when you need to get more loft on the ball. The wedge is designed to get under your ball, so naturally you will need to increase the size of your swing. Looks like Joyce Ann is using a 9-3 to three swing for this pitch shot. Oops, you made a divot. Remember to replace it so it'll grow back. Okay, kids, we worked a lot on that short game. Now let's talk about the full swing. You know, the swing that you make when you hit that ball way out there. Well, it has a little accuracy. We still have to stick to our pre-swing routine and alignment. But now we have some different thoughts. You know, in the pitch, we had little swing thoughts that, if I get you to hold that, well, we were just trying to swing, and our thumbs were pointing up here at 9 o'clock, and they were pointing up at 3 o'clock. Now we're going to make a bigger turn. Think of your back. The target is out here. Now I want you to try to turn your back to that target. Make it a full, complete turn. Back to the target on the back swing. Where are my thumbs pointing? I like to think of my thumbs pointing in my right ear. 
So back to the target, thumbs in your right ear. How about the follow through? How about now, turn that belly to the target. Belly to the target. That's a good thought. Back to the target, belly to the target. Thumbs in the right ear, thumbs in the left ear. That gives me a nice, full, complete swing. How about my footwork? A golf swing is balance in motion. You know, every sport we like to be in good balance, and swinging a golf club is no different. So I'm gonna give you one special drill. Back to the target, belly to the target, and when you finish that golf swing, tap your toe twice. That will give you good left side balance. Let me show you a shot. All my shots, I like to take a nice practice swing to rehearse what I wanna do. Back to the target, belly to the target. Back to the target, belly to the target. Thumbs in the right ear, thumbs in the left ear. Ear, ear. Hold your finish, tap your toe twice. That practice swing felt great. But before we go into the hitting the golf ball, let's do a few drills and exercises that'll really give you the feel of your golf swing. Take a towel with a knot in one end. Now swing it back and through in your best golf position. Be sure the towel goes all the way back on the back swing, then start your forward swing. Back to the target, belly to the target. Hey, now you've got rhythm. Try the same drill with a mop. Notice the increased body movement. And now with the broom, back to the target, belly to the target. Looks like we'll be cleaning up on this golf game. Ha ha. This balance board shows the weight transfer that should be applied to your golf swing. Watch Shannon's heels as he changes his weight from back foot to front foot. Left heel off the ground, right heel off the ground. Now notice the knees. Left knee back, right knee through. Now up to the hips. Left hip back, right hip through. Now to the shoulders. Back to the target, belly to the target. Back to the target, belly to the target. Now we see his full swing in good rhythm. Proper weight transfer will give you a better swing because you're using the strongest muscles in your body, your legs. Good. Now I'm ready to make a full swing, and I'm going to hit my tee shot with the driver, the number one wood. There's one difference, however, when I go to the wood. The pre-swing routine is a little bit different than the iron. Let me show you and explain. I still sight in from behind, picking out an intermediate target on my target line. I'm still going to take my grip and set up my Y. I'm going to walk in from an angle. Again, line up my club face to my intermediate spot putting my feet together. Now I'm going to make a big step with my right foot and just a little step with my left foot. That gets the ball a little more forward in my stance. Now I'm ready to let it swing. Boy, I could take a whole round of those kind of shots. Notice how Shannon widens his stance for the full swing with a wood. The ball position is in a more forward placement to his front foot than it was with his shorter irons.
Okay, Heather, keep your eyes on the back of the ball. By tapping her back foot, she proves that her weight has shifted entirely to her front foot. You know, there are an awful lot of similarities to all sports, particularly golf and baseball. Here I've got a golf club at the end of my baseball bat. In baseball, we play up a little taller posture is all. Golf, we bow over, and we're playing a little lower level. Watch the similarities in the two swings. Back to the target, belly to the target. Now from a different posture. Back to the target, belly to the target. Notice the similarities also between golf and your tennis swing, as demonstrated by Joyce Ann Jackson. Golf is like tennis, too. There is a natural transfer of weight in a good tennis swing, just as in your good golf swing. What's wrong with this picture? Shannon placed his ball in front of the markers. Rules of the game say tee up between or slightly behind the markers. Like you're having a little trouble in that bunker. Uh, I sure am. Boy, I'll I tell can't you. I get out of this crap. There are a lot of ways to get out of that bunker. I'll tell you. Joyce and the kids and I were just going down to the uh, practice trap to practice some bunker shots. Would you like to uh, have a few oh, tips? I surely would. Well, let us help you. There are there are a lot you. of options in a bunker, and we we can surely find a way to get you out of here. I'll do anything to get out of these traps. All right, follow us. Well. When you're in the trap, you've got to remember that the very most important thing is to get it out in one shot. Don't waste a lot of shots trying to get out in a swing that you're not used to doing. Practice that swing like Herb was doing, but practice it away from the golf course. And use a system on the golf course that you feel like you can get it out in one swing. I'm going to show you the first and the simplest way of all to get it out. I'm going to take my putter and simply putt it. You might think that's a little silly, but I can get it out with my putter very easily as long as I don't have a lip in front of me. I have to make sure I go in the direction where it's very, very level and smooth as I putt. Now I'm going to set up so that I can really pop down on this ball with authority to send it out. I'm going to put the ball a little bit back on my right foot here. I'm going to set up my Y and I'm going to swing back and through about seven to five and pop that little ball out that got me out one shot you can't always putt out of the trap I'm going to show you another way it's the second easiest way Shannon would you hand me my wedge please Thanks. now you can putt all the time when you have no lip but if you have a little lip you can chip out because the chipping stroke will get the ball over that lip and run it up onto the green. I'm going to almost have the same principle I had before. Put my ball back in my stance toward the right foot, set up my Y, and again I'm going to feel like I hit the ball with a nice pop. Eight to four. Got it out again. I tell you what, if I'm not comfortable with that harder shot, I'm definitely going to use these two shots because I can get out in one shot. Well, you don't always have the best of lies and sometimes you need a high soft shot. Just like the pitch shot, we're going to have to break the tail off our Y as we swing back for a little more distance and a little higher softer shot. 
Remember our little thumbs up, thumbs up, nine to three type of swing? Well, in this shot, we're going to use the sand wedge. It's a special club that's designed to cut the sand out from under the ball. And now, instead of hitting the ball, we're going to hit about two inches behind the ball with our little nine to three thumbs up swing. Much nicer shot, but much more risky than the chip shots and the putts. Well, here we are in a fairway bunker, and I've got a lot longer shot than I normally would have on the greenside bunkers. Here, if the lie would permit, the objective is to get a little more distance. So I'm going to, since the lie is pretty good, take my six iron because I've got 200 yards to get to my green, and this ought to give me about half the distance that I need. And preparing to hit the uh, fairway bunker shot, I'm going to choke up a little bit more on my club, make it a little shorter club so I can control the club a little better. And I'm also going to work my feet more into the sand. Also, when I make this swing, I'm going to have a controlled backswing and move right to a complete finish. Watch, and I'll show you how. That shot got me back into the middle of the fairway into a position that I can comfortably get on the green with one more golf shot. That was great instruction, Dick. I think, I, I believe I can get that ball out now. You just watch my smoke here. Great shot. All right. After hitting your sand shot, take time to rake it smooth for the next poor fool to land in. Of course, the best place to practice is at your favorite golf course. But you can have fun practicing your golf swing at home. But be careful not to trash mom's favorite lamp. Be creative. Set up your own miniature golf course in your backyard or at the park. It's a perfect way to practice your chip shots. Your shadow can be a great golfing partner. Not only will it show you how good your swing is looking, it'll help you keep your head steady. Practice brushing the grass back and forth. It'll give your swing consistency. Swish. That's the sound of a relaxed grip. You can practice your full swing with a ball in your backyard too. A, a wiffle ball, that is. Four. And don't forget that putting on a smooth carpet is the next best thing to being there. The great thing about golf is that it will challenge you as long as you play. It will never bore you because no matter how good you become, there was always something new and exciting to learn. So enjoy your adventure and become the best golfer you can be. Play. Golf. Better. 
If you love the game of golf and play for the fun, the challenge, and the personal satisfaction, then maybe it's time to get away to sunny Florida and enjoy the game of golf like never before at the Ben Sutton Golf School. What makes our golf school the finest in the world is a combination of experience, course design, and good times. The Ben Sutton system to better golf takes your natural ability and tunes it for consistency and improved play. At Ben Sutton's Golf School, we realize that each player is different. You have developed your golf swing to suit your own style, physique, and athletic skills. What we do is simply show you what you already have, what you're doing right, and build on it. At the heart of the Sutton system is our staff. You'll get hands-on, personal instruction from the world's finest teaching professionals. A group that represents more than 450 years of golf instruction experience. Imagine, it's like vacationing with your own golf professional for a full week. Hey, always wanted to be a star? We'll put you on camera. Using high-speed video equipment, we'll videotape every angle of your swing. Now you can see what your playing partners have been watching all this time. Your professional will then analyze your grip, your swing, your stance, and help you develop the physical ability and mental approach to improve your game. Our students include singles, couples, and families of all ages and handicaps. Now it's time to get out on a very special course, the world's most complete golf school facility, specifically designed for golf instruction. Nine complete holes, designed by a nationally known golf architect, provide on-course training under all possible playing conditions, including lakes, sand, and grass bunkers. Your instruction will be in actual playing situations, not just out on a driving range. We'll work on every aspect of your game. Putting, chipping, long and short irons, woods, sand and trouble shots, all with an emphasis on accuracy and consistency. Plus, on-course training aids will give you a new feel for proper technique. You'll also learn course strategy, new knowledge to help you play smart golf. Our unique nine-hole course also features multiple tees, which allow you to play each hole as a par three, par four, or par five. No golf school anywhere matches our 40-acre practice facility. And if that's not enough, the Ben Sutton Golf School is surrounded by the beautiful 27-hole championship Sun City Center Country Club. So when class is out, hey, it's time for more golf, because all green fees and carts are included in your Ben Sutton Golf School package. At the exciting week's end, you'll play in a Pro-Am tournament at the Country Club that'll give you a chance to try out what you've learned and win prizes. You'll also have your golf swing videotaped again so that you can compare it to the beginning of the week and see how much improvement you've made. Hi, I'm Ben Sutton. And I'm Dick Sutton. Come down to sunny Florida and learn to play your best golf with us. The Ben Sutton Golf School is located in one of Florida's fastest growing vacation areas, 25 miles south of Tampa in beautiful Sun City Center. And when you're done for the day, you'll enjoy the comfort and modern accommodations of the Sun City Center Inn, where 40 courtside rooms are reserved for golf school students. Each room features two double beds, cable TV, and, outside your door, a palm-shaded swimming pool for your relaxation. And in the evenings, join us for great food and fun at the Sun City Center Inn restaurant, including a wild Thursday night luau, complete with hula dancers, and a few surprises. The Ben Sutton Golf School is open 52 weeks a year. Our classes fill quickly, so give us a call toll-free, 1-800-225-6923, and get ready for a fun-filled week of personalized golf instruction at the Ben Sutton Golf School.